it's always about love. In the ancient Hawaiian healing art of Ho'oponopono, the practitioner proclaims to the client, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you, I love you. By this expression of empathy, this plea for forgiveness, an expression of gratitude, and a declaration of love, it connects both the practitioner and client to the highest energies of source. A frequency resonance is created that removes blockages represented by disease, allowing for an experience of oneness that is source. It is this oneness that heals. The source within the healer connects to the source within the client. Hence, where two or more are gathered, their I, source, will be also. Applied to self-healing, there is the temporal self, who is being defined by egoic personality constructs of socialization, having a human experience through time. And then there is the higher self, that human god spark that is a direct and eternal portal to source. When the temporal self surrenders its constructs to the source portal, the oneness created suspends those temporal constructs, transforming the entire mess into a healing experience. As temporal selves experiencing the dimensional flow of time, when we are fully aware that the definitions of self are contrived via cultural programming, personal preferences, and trauma, we can much more easily see through this transparency and live our lives within the source portal. We can then transmit this state to others because source resonates with source within every being everywhere. This is what is meant by the greeting, Namaste. The source creator that is me resonates with the source creator that is you. We live our temporal lives on a planet that has been mightily attacked and subsumed by dark energy for millions of years. This black goo has the very specific mission to eliminate love and oneness that it creates. The strategies all have to do with creating a convincing illusion of separation from source. All manner of psychological operations have been employed to get you believing that you cannot, or must not, experience the source portal we all have. What we end up with is a perception of a reality where Source and its feeling of cosmic love is over there somewhere, instead of us being in the intimate feeling and expression of Source as Self. In many shamanic traditions, the duality of good versus evil, light versus dark, is the highest crime in the universe. It is a crime because it broadcasts the lie of two separate states of being and experience, one good and one evil. The basic true reality is that there is only oneness in love. Dark and evil exist as part of a spectrum of being, merely representing a pretense of a choice not to love, a denial of love which requires love to exist in order to be denied. It is a flimsy illusion, and yet when we adopt this denial of love as real, it can seem like we are trapped in a never-ending hell. We can get so caught up in interpreting experiences as good or evil, we overlook the choice we made not to see only love, which is all there is. It is the cosmic gaslighting we are all susceptible to because we've defined ourselves as incapable or undeserving of being love. The black goo controllers gleefully propagandize life on this planet as a war against evil to divide and conquer, getting us all choosing sides and judging each other's actions and intentions, ignoring our innate superpower of choice to love that would short-circuit that lie and reconnect us to our God spark. When all experience is defined as love, or at least a cry for love, we create true context because regardless of appearances, all the stories our experiences tell demonstrate how we've chosen or not chosen to love. It's always about love, no matter the expression. Because our experience is the only thing that is real, our feelings are particularly susceptible to being divided into camps of good and bad. The controllers really only had to traumatize us to get us feeling bad feelings. An essential strategy is to get us believing the illusion that when we hurt, 
we are also alone, isolated, deprived of our connections, and severed from our safety and courage. And yet, we can circumvent even these tactics by choosing to feel the love that surrounds the trauma. At all times, regardless of how it seems, we are surrounded by a host of angels, guides, and all sorts of benevolent and lighted energies, all of them envoys of cosmic love. We have only to make that choice to embrace that love and acknowledge that is what we truly are. And by surrendering that trauma through the source portal, it can no longer trap us in the hell of pain and suffering. When pain, trauma, negativity, and all accompanying emotions seem to overwhelm us around us, reach out to love. Reach out to the protection and comfort of the etheric beings always at our side. Reach out to Source. And in no time, you'll be centered in the Source portal, resonating with who you really are. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com.